Ram Kamali taking you through some of the things people are talking about and some of the stuff they're sharing around the world on Newsfeed today. Companies making money in the occupied territories revealed by the UN. Will it make any difference? We hear a Sudanese artist's thoughts about the prospect of former leader Omar al-Bashir standing trial at the ICC. Actors argue on social media over women's equality in the film business. And this one's a winner. It's our animals doing stuff. And at the top of our news feed, the occupied territories. It's taken the United Nations four years to tell the world the 112 companies who are doing business in illegal settlements in Palestine. So what was an open secret is now documented by the United Nations, and yet nothing will happen and nothing will change. Here's Regan. The UN has identified 112 companies that are profiting from doing business in illegal Israeli settlements. The businesses have been identified in a report on enterprises in the occupied Palestinian territory released by the UN Human Rights Office. 94 of them are Israeli. The rest are based overseas in countries including the US, the UK, France, the Netherlands, Luxembourg and Thailand. Several are well-known travel companies like Airbnb, Booking.com, Expedia, TripAdvisor and Opodo. There's also the telecoms firm Motorola and the manufacturer JCB. The settlements these companies have been operating in are illegal under international law. Regardless of this, Israel has been creating and expanding them for more than half a century. However, the UN says there's not much it can do. The report makes clear that the reference to these business entities is not and does not purport to be a judicial or quasi-judicial process the Office of the High Commissioner on Human Rights said. While the settlements as such are regarded as illegal under international law, this report does not provide a legal characterization of the activities in question or of business enterprises' involvement in them. The report stops short of calling the businesses' activities illegal, but nonetheless, Palestinians welcomed the UN reporting and used social media to call out the companies involved. Shameful illegal actions of TripAdvisor, Expedia, Airbnb, Motorola and the rest. UN lists firms linked to illegal Israeli settlements in West Bank. Israeli's Prime Minister made his thoughts clear. The UN Human Rights Council resolution to mark companies in Israel is worthless. They, the UN Human Rights Council, are marked. Whoever boycotts us are boycotted themselves. And Mr. Netanyahu has little reason to be conciliatory with the support of the White House and Trump's new pro-Israel plan on the table. So Palestinians have international law on their side, but as usual, it doesn't mean a thing. All right, let's take a look at some of the other things that caught our eye on social media. Well, this is Ingrid Escamilla. She was killed in Mexico when the police investigators leaked pictures of her body online. So people began posting beautiful pictures in her memory to drown out the gruesome ones. Femicide is rising alarmingly in Mexico. There are at least 700 cases before the courts. These abominations are the latest marketing ploy from KFC and Crocs. For some reason, they decided to come together to create what is a contender for the world's ugliest and perhaps stupidest shoe. And to prove how stupid they are, that thing on the front of the crop that resembles a piece of fried chicken is also made to smell like fried chicken. And the company that make these have to tell people that it's not for human consumption, which tells you all you need to know about the expected IQ level of prospective purchasers. It began as a holiday, eager to escape a bright future on the Great Plains. Arthur Howitzer Jr. transformed the series of travelogue columns into the French Dispatch. 
and this is the trailer for the new Wes Anderson film. It's called The French Dispatch. And I can't tell you how great it looks because I refuse to watch trailers. I do like to go in fresh, but our Louis has watched the trailer numerous times and tells me it looks excellent, which is very pleasing. It seems that Wes Anderson is the newsfeed's favorite filmmaker. This film is out on the 24th of July. The kids did this. Obliterated a thousand years of Republican authority in less than a fortnight. What do they want? Freedom. Full stop. Now, the possibility that the former dictator of Sudan could be sent to the International Criminal Court has made headlines. We wanted to get a perspective from a guy who used his arts to criticize the regime of Omar al-Bashir. Meet Khalid Albay. I think peace in Sudan right now uh, and stability are very fragile. Uh, we definitely need the support of the international community. We definitely need to get off the uh, the, uh, the terrorist list that uh, that we've been on and the American terrorist list that we've been on since 20 years now, which really um, affected our our economical situation and will still affect it. If you know, it doesn't matter. Um, what happens in the um, in the transitional government now? I mean, the, the the economical thing is the first thing, and 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 if if we are not lifted off uh, those lists, I think I think peace is going to be very hard to achieve without the right economical uh, stability. Sudan right now. Uh, being in the geopolitical situation that it's in. Uh, we need the help of the international community, the EU, uh, uh, the UN, just like uh, the PM, Mr. Hamadok, tried to do with the peace process. Um, I think it's very hard uh, being where we are right now. We've been through 40 years of war, uh, the independence of the South, uh, of course, 30 years of dictatorship, uh, and, you know, uh, three protests, three revolutions that, 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 that happened until it, it actually happened. I don't, I don't think there's quite anxiety, uh, but there's, there's, um, there's different ways of thinking about how is this good for the country? How is this good for the trial? Um, is this good for our self-esteem as a, as, a, as a new independent, uh, you know, judicial system uh, for the country. So there's, there's, it's just, I think it's a, I think it's a healthy discussion that's going on right now, um, which, which we need, which we need to have. All right, let's go to Chile now, where the government brought in a new law four years ago requiring unhealthy food to be properly labeled, telling you just how bad it is. And now they report some real measurable success. Take a look at this. Chile has an obesity problem. Half of its children are overweight and a third of its adults are obese. Obesity can be the underlying cause of serious health conditions, including heart disease, diabetes and some cancers. Obesity continues to increase and the increase has been sustained, so it's one of the health ministry's priorities. It causes chronic illnesses and diseases that are common causes of death in Chile. To address the problem, Chile introduced a food labelling law in 2016, requiring food manufacturers to modify their products and change their labelling. Foods that contain excessive levels of fat, salt, sugar or calories must bear a special warning label. The law prevents junk food from being sold in or around schools and restricts television and online advertising targeted at children. Cartoon animals like these can no longer appear on packaging. So have these regulations helped to improve the health of an entire country? Well, a recent study found that there has been some effect. In the 18 months following the introduction of the laws, sale of sugary drinks dropped nearly 25%. There's been a 5% increase in purchases of water and sugarless drinks. 
and Chilean kids have been subjected to half as many ads for junk food and sugary drinks. I avoid buying products that have too many labels. I buy the ones with the least amount of sugar or calories. I think it's a very good law, especially with the type of food, knowing how to identify them and gain more knowledge. But I think it's also not 100% effective because people keep buying them, even with the labels because of the taste. The results of Chile's experiment are being closely watched by other governments, who may wish to adopt similar policies in the future. And we keep spinning around the world now for some other stories you need to know this Thursday. The US women's team are fighting for pay parity with their male counterparts. They've sued their federation and will be in court in May. In the meantime, the US National Soccer Team Players Association say the women should be paid at least triple what the men got in 2018. The women's are reigning world champions. What is truly Scandinavian? Get up, please. Absolutely nothing. A quite brilliant advert by Scandinavian Airlines has been pulled because of complaints from right-wing people online. In, Scandin in the ad, the ad implies that Scandinavians are travellers who've been all around the world and have taken back parts of other cultures and incorporated it into their own, thereby enhancing their own culture. But nationalists in Sweden and Denmark did not agree and said they would not use the airline again. A Turkish man called Chayan Temel found a bug in Apple's iOS software. He reported it to Apple and they rewarded him with 2,000 lira, which he donated to the earthquake survivors from Elazar. What a good guy. And WhatsApp has achieved a milestone, two billion users. The Facebook-owned app put out a blog post to celebrate and reiterated their commitment to end-to-end -end encryption of the software, which stops criminals, hackers, governments, and law enforcement from able to see the messages you send, so they say. Now, an action by one actor at the Oscars recently has led to another actor calling her out for not doing enough to help women in Hollywood. Take a look at this. On Sunday, Natalie Portman went to the Oscars wearing a cape embroidered with the names of women directors who weren't nominated for awards. And it created quite a buzz on social media. But the story didn't end there. On Tuesday, activist and filmmaker Rose McGowan called it an empty gesture. In a Facebook post, she wrote... I find Portman's type of activism deeply offensive to those of us who actually do the work. I'm not writing this out of bitterness. I'm writing out of disgust. I just want her and other actresses to walk the walk. McGowan urged Portman to work with and hire more women if she felt so strongly about the cause. There is no law that says you need to hire women, work with women or support women. By all means, you do you. But I am saying stop pretending you're some kind of champion for anything other than yourself. And on Wednesday, Portman responded. I agree with Miss McGowan that it is inaccurate to call me brave for wearing a garment with women's names on it. Brave is a term I more strongly associate with actions, like those of the women who have been testifying against Harvey Weinstein the last few weeks under incredible pressure. She said she hoped the industry would create more opportunities for women. After they are made, female-directed films face difficulty getting into festivals, getting distribution and getting accolades because of the gatekeepers at every level. So I want to say, I have tried and I will keep trying. While I have not yet been successful, I am hopeful that we are stepping into a new day. And last up, we have a couple of prize-winning animals for you and our animals doing stuff. Now, these two rodents, who seem to be having a scuffle on the London Underground, have won the People's Choice Awards for the Wildlife Photographer of the Year. The picture is called Station Squabble and was shot by someone called Sam Rowley. He said the little things were fighting over a crumb of food and he was able to get this picture. Congratulations to Mr Rowley and to the mouse that got the grub. 
And that will do from the Newsfeed team. Reach out to me with your questions, comments, complaints, and suggestions. You'll find me at Kamali Melbourne. You'll find us 24 7 on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to that channel and follow me on Twitter. Follow, subscribe, and add. See you again tomorrow.